Good morning. I'm glad to have you with us today. Uh, I just want to take a few minutes before we actually get into the teaching. I'm going to try to speak a little bit more quickly today. There are so many things that the Lord has impressed upon my heart to share with you that I believe are critical at this period of time in our lives as well as in the world that we live in. You know, Jesus is waiting for something before his return. He's waiting for the precious fruit of the earth. And he's commissioned us to go into the ends of all the earth and preach the gospel, not in the wisdom that man's word teacheth, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. If we're to reach this world before the return of Christ Jesus, we're going to need the power of God. And to have the power of God, we need to operate within the confines or really within the borders of his word. We've been talking about authority, and our authority reaches as far as his jurisdiction. And so we need to understand authority. We need to understand how far-reaching God's authority is and, and what power is available to enforce that authority. Now, before we actually enter into the message today, I just want to encourage you. You know, back in Genesis, we find the account in chapter 3 of the temptation of Adam and Eve. And uh, we know, we've read this before, we know that Adam was present, and he... he fumbled it he he blew it he you know threw everything aside and cast god aside to prefer uh you know this woman that god had given him essentially and fell for the temptation and, and you know I, I won't judge him too harshly i i just hate that he betrayed the father but you know what i hate there have been times in my life that point blank i've betrayed the father and i'm guessing that's probably true of you and if you have, I'm, I'm sure of this as well, that the devil's never let you forget it, has he? But you know what? Thank God for the blood of Jesus and its power to cleanse us even from a consciousness of sin. We don't need to be preoccupied with sin. We don't need to pre be preoccupied with our past or the felons therein. Amen. Thank God he hasn't given us what we deserve. If he gave us what we deserve, we'd all be just smoldering, cember, <laughs> smoldering embers on this earth and we'd perish to an eternal hell. But he gave us heaven instead because he gave us Jesus. Amen. And we're so glad for that. Well, anyway, in the temptation, the devil preyed upon Eve's insecurities. Uh, he suggested to her that she was less than who God created her to be. Does that sound familiar to you? You know, maybe this morning as we're approaching this teaching, uh, you're listening out of some sense of curiosity, but you're not really sure it applies to you because surely only those that are more spiritual, <laughs> more advanced, maybe only those that are of what we term the fivefold ministry. You know, they're only apostles or prophets or evangelists or pastors or teachers. Maybe those are the only ones that God would use this way, but it's just kind of interesting to know some of these things. Uh, listen, it's for the entire body of Christ. You as a believer, I don't care if you're the little toe on the foot of Jesus, you're above the devil. You've got authority, and there's a reason for that, and it's important that you understand that. Uh, you know, just as Eve was everything God said she was, you're everything he says you are. You're his workmanship created anew in Christ Jesus unto good works. In other words, God has given you the capacity to do something meaningful and something of eternal significance. So don't sell yourself short, because in doing so, you're really selling God short. Amen. I want to pray. Father, we just thank you so much. I thank you for a, a mouth and wisdom to speak, Father, in such a way that it will convey your wisdom and build faith in the hearts of those who hear. Lord, there's some that they just need some hope today. This world has turned them every way but loose and they're struggling. But Father, you've got plans for better. Uh, you know, I think there are a lot of us that we can relate to Moses. He was out in the wilderness. Everything he had tried just you know blew up in his face and here he was now aged at the you know in his 80s and and he's in the backside of the desert and probably thought he was as far away from god as he was man but god met him there and and lord in that place where those that are hurting today are lonely and broken and and maybe maybe they're even seeking that sense of isolation and 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 just wonder you know if you even carry more i just thank you for affirming to them that you you don't just care you love them with an intensity that's unparalleled father help us to have ears to hear today to hear what you by your spirit are saying unto us as believers as members of the church and father help us to have the wisdom of god to know how to act upon the word as we hear it in jesus name Amen. Amen. Well, we've been talking about authority, and we've learned from Luke ten nineteen that Jesus told his disciples, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. 
Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. In other words, thank God that we have authority over them, but thank Him even more that we are born again, and our eternal destiny is set toward heaven because of Jesus. Glory to God. Now, we know this about authority and about delegated power. It rests upon, or the strength of it is found, in the, the power or the authority of those who delegate the authority to us. For example, a, a police officer has authority within the jurisdiction or within the realm of influence of those he's responsible to. In, in uh, my hometown in Bradenton, we had two different police departments, essentially. We had the city police, and they were <clears throat> basically responsible for enforcing the law within the city limits. And then we had the, the county sheriff's department that reached beyond our immediate city and actually encompassed uh, 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 an area beyond our city, surrounding our city and other communities within that region, uh, Manatee County Sheriff's Department. So all the cities within Manatee County, uh, you know, basically they had jurisdiction within that, that community. Well, as believers, we need to understand how far reaching the authority is that has been delegated to us by Jesus. Amen. It's important to know that. Are there any limitations on it? Uh, we need to understand that. And so we're going to talk about it a little bit today. And we're going to talk about some of the more practical aspects. Why should you know about authority? You know, isn't authority just a subject that, that some evangelist or some preacher on a platform is supposed to know about in case there happens to be a demon that needs to be cast out or this that or the other no authority is far more practical than that i mean it it includes that kind of a thing should it occur but to me that's probably a very small part of its application in the lives of most believers but every believer who who prays has need of an understanding of authority you know, when we go back to the temptation again and think about it, God the Father had delegated authority to Adam and, and essentially to Eve as well so that when the adversary came to tempt them, they would be prepared. He even prepared them. He instructed them, you know, that they were to bring things into subjection that crept and crawled on the earth. And if ever, anything ever crept or crawled on the earth, it was certainly the serpent and, and the devil that, that came to them in the guise of a serpent. <clears throat> and so they had authority there. But can you imagine being Adam? And here he is. He, he has longed for a companion. God brought him a companion, fashioned her out of his own rib. And, and you know, custom made Eve to suit him perfectly. And here, here they are. And suddenly uh, Eve succumbs to the temptation. And she, she falls prey to the temptation. She, she takes and she eats. And suddenly, that deepest of connections between the two of them is broken because when she ate, when she partook, she died spiritually. She literally died spiritually. Now, to die spiritually means one becomes alienated or separated. When, when Adam sinned, he died spiritually. He became separated or alienated from God. That's why he fled the presence of God rather than welcome the presence of God. And, and it's important to understand that. So here Adam is, and for, for however long of a time there was between the time that she ate and he ate, there was the greatest sense of loss one can imagine on this planet. And, and, and so what did he do? He responded in the wrong way. Rather than seeking God out for help, listen, I bungled it, I messed up, he entered into sin with her, and he did her no good. You know, we don't do others any good when we join them in their sins as though it's okay. And and listen, I think we probably all have done that at one time or another. I know when I was in the process of returning to the Lord that I struggled because I felt such a sense of responsibility for people I had led astray in life. And I tried to live among them and with them as, as though it was okay to continue to live as I had. And it wasn't okay because it kept dragging me farther away from God. And thankfully, I had enough sense to recognize that. And, and, and the Lord, you know, really helped me see some things from his perspective that helped me recover myself. So here they are. They, they, they have sinned against God. They forfeited authority. They came under the jurisdiction of the devil now. And, and sin and death began its reign on planet Earth. Well, thank God Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. And, and part of that which was lost was certainly our relationship, but also our authority as believers in this earth. 
And Jesus is telling disciples over here in Luke chapter 10, 19, I give unto you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions over all the ability of the enemy. Uh, so how practical is this? What is the use of this authority? What good does it really do us to know this? Well, in that situation, Adam could have done something had he chosen to. He could have stopped the devil in his tracks and preserved the interest in the welfare of God in the earth and even his wife's own welfare had he stepped in. He was there the whole time during this temptation. The woman, we're told, turned and gave to Adam her husband who was with her, and he took and he ate as well. Instead of eating, he should have taken authority long before she took that first bite. He neglected his authority, and humanity has suffered ever since. Listen, if we continue to ignore the fact that authority is ours, uh, we can live in this make-believe world. We can hide our, our heads in the sand like an ostrich. <laughs> I don't know if ostriches really do that. Does anybody know? <laughs> anyway, we can do that. But, but the neglect of this truth is going to cost, and it will cost greatly. It cost all of humanity when Adam neglected to apply his authority on a most basic level. And it's not that you've got to go out of your way to find places for which your authority will apply and, and prevail or benefit you. Uh, it, it's just in the course of living that you're going to find occasion to need your authority and how to use it. Amen. So authority is delegated power. We all enjoy it. Glory to God. Amen. Um, and, and we need to understand it. Listen to this. This is, a, I believe, a different trend. Well, goodness, I tell you. I'm using my laptop here, and, and uh, there's some things it's good for. There's other things it's not so good for. In Matthew 28, listen to this. Matthew 28 and verse 16. It's actually out of the King James. I'll, I'll give you a different translation in just a moment. Got an itch here, y'all. Excuse me. <laughs> it says in Matthew 28, 16, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. I want you to notice this very closely. It's kind of funny how we can read Scripture and read Scripture and read it time and again and read right over certain things. But it says the eleven disciples went away into Galilee. There were eleven because, remember, Judas had betrayed Jesus and lost his life. <clears throat> it says... <clears throat> When the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain place where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Some doubted. I want you to remember that. Some doubted. It doesn't tell us who did, but some doubted. Now verse 18 continues, and it says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power, again that word power is what? It's the Greek word exousia. All authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Glory to God. He had defeated the devil. He's been raised up over the devil, exalted on high, and uh, he's, he's about to be enthroned at the Father's right hand. And so he's saying, All authority is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. That word teach literally means to disciple. Bring them into the lifestyle of faith, a disciplined lifestyle. Amen. And so it says, Go ye therefore and disciple all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Now it's interesting as we look at this because he's saying, I've been given this all this authority and I'm commissioning you. So he's delegating once more. He's reinforcing the delegation of his authority to us as believers. We're the body of Christ in the earth today and we are here to exercise his authority to enforce the Father's will upon this earth in, in the absence of Jesus physically. We're the physical representation of him in the world today. So it's important if he is to be represented that we understand our place and our position as sons of God and the authority that we enjoy in the name of Christ Jesus. Uh, that's the only way we can effectively represent our Father and represent Jesus. He, he um, tells us down here, he says, go and teach all nations. Uh, so uh, this authority reaches to the ends of the earth. And then in the last verse it said, even unto the end of the world, and it's throughout the ages. This authority didn't just last until the last apostle. By the way, the last apostle hasn't come yet. Amen? Because Jesus gave apostles unto the church, and the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. 
Read Ephesians chapter 4 sometime and think about that. So God hasn't withdrawn those gifts. The church needs apostles today, and an apostle is a sent one. It means that one, it speaks of one that God has anointed, equipped, and sent for a specific purpose within the world today. Usually they are sent to establish new works. Many missionaries uh, fall into that category, but there's an, there's got to be that anointing upon them for the supernatural because apart from God, we are powerless to reach this world. We're powerless to reach our own home or our own neighborhood. We need the Holy Spirit in these last days. And so anyway, he, he we can see there are, uh, there are some parameters here. All power is going unto me in heaven and earth. Amen. So within the immediate heavens around us, within this earth, We've been delegated authority, and it's through unto the end of the world. Until Jesus comes back, and this world, it, 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 the plan of God is fully consummated, the devil's cast into the pit. Until that time, this authority is in force uh, in our behalf. Amen. Glory to God. And I want you to remember, remember that statement that we quoted back there, verse 17? It said, but some doubt it. It doesn't matter whether you believe or not. You've still got authority. And, and because of that, you've got some responsibility. You can't just pretend this doesn't exist. And it's so important. Listen, I'd rather see you understand who you are and what you have and rise up victorious in Jesus than, than spend your life heartbroken and desperate and hopeless uh, wondering why God doesn't do something. He did something. He sent you. He's equipped you. Amen? Now, there's some people that want to shy away from this because they don't like responsibility, but you've got it whether you want it or not. <laughs> there's going to come a day. See, God has given to each of us certain talents, some more than others, and we're only responsible for what we have, but this is one talent everybody has and remember again it said some doubted but he didn't say well this authority is for everybody except those of you that doubted he continued to talk to them as a group because whether they doubted or not it doesn't change what god has given and what god is doing amen glory to god and, and i'm so glad for that i'm glad that he's a constant and we you know god's not fickle he's not a man that he should lie he's not the son of man that he should repent he's not always fidgeting and changing his mind he's fixed and he's reliable and dependable. Amen? It's important that we know that. Well, uh, so as we talk about this, let's think about some practical applications of authority. Why, why does it matter to us? You know, if all we see the use for authority as being is, is for some preacher casting out a demon or, or uh, you know, healing the sick because there's an element of the exercise of authority that has to do with, with praying for the sick as well. Uh, how does that matter to us? Well, it does matter to you. Uh, you know, one thing is this. We need to understand that God has given us authority over our own lives. We're responsible for our lives, and so we've got some authority over our own lives. And it's important that we understand this. There are a lot of people that are, are terrified at the prospect of these days that we live in being the last days because... It, 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 the way some people taught Revelation, it would appear that we lose all control of our destiny and nothing could be further than the truth. We need to be more assured than ever of the resources that we have at our command uh, for our very lives to be preserved or for the lives of those that we love to be preserved. Let me ask you, would it have served Eve had Adam exercised his authority? Well, certainly it would have. Well, who, who in your life might be depending upon your prayers? How many of you remember? And, and think about this. How many, of you, how many of you have ever thought about the fact that, that maybe the very reason you're still drawing a breath is because somebody in your life deemed prayer important enough to pray for you? Yes. And maybe within those prayers, they exercised authority in your behalf. Now, there, there are times that I've done things that I just knew God was leading me to do it. I didn't know why. For example, I've given the example of, of the fire at, at the apartment building where we were living and I was preparing to move in with Robin as we were uh, engaged and ready to be married, uh, the, the fire that took place and how I was standing out there and, and wondering why God wasn't doing something about it and all of a sudden the Spirit of God just whispered so softly and so quietly and said, why don't you speak to the wind? 
Well, I know a lot more why he told me to do that now than I did then, but I did it then. And I think there have been times in the past that people have prayed, and, and they were led by the Holy Spirit, just like I was in that instance, and so many others as well. They were led by the Holy Spirit, but they didn't understand why. What, what would happen if we knew how to cooperate with God? I think there's so many things that God has done in my life in the past in spite of me. I want him to be able to use me and say it was because I finally listened. Amen. And I simply obeyed. Glory to God. It's not about being convinced in your head. It's about being obedient from your heart. And we're going to get into that a little bit more in just a few minutes. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, in Matthew chapter 8, the example is given of the centurion and his servant. If you'll remember that, Jesus just very much commended his faith. It says that when he heard the centurion's response to his presence, his agreement to minister to his servant, it says when Jesus heard it in verse 10 of Matthew 8, it says when he heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great a faith, no, not in Israel. Here this man was a Gentile, a Roman, an adversary of the Jews. And, and, and the, you know, side of most Jews and yet he had greater faith in their Messiah than they did time and again we see that in the scriptures it ought not be time and again we see uh, that those who were supposed to be a faith had none were unwilling to exercise any while outsiders came in and and were blessed and benefited they didn't even have a covenant those that had a covenant should have benefited but they didn't why was that? Because they didn't know what was theirs to be had, and they refused to listen. And so in this situation, uh, Jesus was just astounded. But what was it that lent this man such faith that Jesus literally stopped in his tracks to acknowledge it and, and validate it? What was it about it? Well, Jesus said in verse 7, I'll come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Is there anybody that you know that you love that you see suffering right now? Anybody. You know, in agreement with him to allow him to minister to Jairus and to his daughter, to his household. God needs our agreement. He needs us to allow him to do things when he uh, is present in our lives. And, and, and so here this situation is, and, and the centurion had sought Jesus out, and Jesus responded, and, and the man says, uh, I'm not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. In verse 9 he continues, he said, For I'm a man under authority. In other words, I understand this faith thing, because I understand authority. I derive my power from those that I am submitted to, just as you, Jesus, derive your power from the Father to whom you're submitted. And I just trust that your words will act in our behalf to affect your will. All oh, that men would simply give heed to the Word of God. Amen? And so Jesus, he heard that and he marveled. Uh, is there somebody in your life that needs someone to go to Jesus for them? Is there someone in your life that needs somebody that's willing to rise up and take the authority that God has given? Lord, this world cannot stop those that will take the time to learn from God who they are and what they have. Yes. You know, Moses proved he could fail royally. <laughs> and he ran from God. He hid from God. And God told him, I want you to go in there. And essentially, he said, I want you to take on not just Pharaoh. What was the threat of Pharaoh? It was his command of the entire nation of Egypt. Think about that a minute. We, we see it as a contest between two men and some kind of a power struggle between two massive egos. It wasn't that. It wasn't that. Pharaoh was a god to his people and his, his word was their command. And, and so there couldn't have been a, a greater threat hardly that existed in the world. And so what did God tell Moses? He said, hey, what's that in your hand? All you're going to need, Moses, is a big stick. You don't even really need a big stick. But see, that stick represented something. It represented authority. <laughs> and he went into Egypt and took command, didn't he? 
glory to God, he began to proclaim the curse upon Pharaoh as, as Pharaoh's neck stiffened and his heart hardened and, and, and things went south. Uh, Moses maintained command because he had authority. That's what that staff represented was God's word and God's authority uh, to affect his will. Listen, it, when, when you are honoring God and walking with God, not when you're perfect. Moses wasn't perfect. He missed it after that. He missed it before then. But God still used him because Moses believed in spite of Moses' shortcomings, God was big enough. God was perfect. How big is your God? Not how right are you. Not how perfect are you. How big is your God? My Lord, he used a jackass to speak to a prophet. <laughs> he uses something today to speak to his people as well, but I won't go there, okay? <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah, Moses, you just take it. All you need to beat Pharaoh is a stick. <laughs> Can you imagine? What, what if God told you, I want you to take on China. See that, that limb off that peach tree over there? I want you to go give them a thrashing. You know, if God told you to do it, it could be done. And China's not our... We're not here to struggle with flesh and blood. But you know what? We are here to enforce the will of God. And sometimes that means that we're going to encounter uh, spirits operating through other people. But even in those instances, we need to understand that we have authority and that we don't need to be limited by the threat of the devil or the threat of man. Amen? So anyway, uh, Jairus needed to give, you know, he, Jesus was depending upon his authority as a father in that instance. And uh, <laughs> we need to understand this, this matter of authority is very practical in its reach. Uh, I, I, I've seen in our own family those that, that had no hope but Jesus when when we were able to pray and exercise the authority that God gave us their lives were prolonged I, I've seen cancers disappear off of loved ones and off of church members over the years and, and it wasn't because we prayed oh God please take this cancer away no he had given us authority over everything that crept upon this earth and it was creeping on their body on this earth so we took authority and we cursed it and we've seen it time and again time and again and other growths as well uh, I, I've uh, over the years had several things happen to me that I, I needed to be able to exercise my authority to find relief you know uh, listen it can be as simple as a wart <laughs> or it can be some form of a cyst I, I, I years ago had injured a wrist and developed ganglion cyst and anybody that's ever had one of those it, it can be just one of the most painful afflictions that you've ever had uh, it, 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 you know it, it would affect not just my wrist but my whole hand my whole arm up into my shoulder I would ache at times because of the pressure that thing created on the nerves in my arm yeah. and, and uh, you know I actually had it surgically removed and, and and it was funny because before I had it surgically removed by one doctor I went to another doctor and he said well you can give it the Bible treatment the Bible treatment was to take the Bible and just to have, lay your hand on a table or a hard surface, have somebody smack it with the Bible. They called it the Bible treatment because the Bible was the biggest book in the house. <laughs> and so if you hit somebody with it, you could give them quite a wallop. You know, back in the old days, they didn't used to have a Bible like, uh, you know, well, they didn't have it on cell phones, they didn't have cell phones, but they didn't have small Bibles. They just had a big fat family Bible. And so they called that the Bible treatment. Well, I had it surgically removed, but do you know that a year later it was back? And so I learned about a different Bible treatment after that, and it was to take authority over it and to curse it as Jesus cursed the fig tree. Now, by cursing it, I don't mean I sat there and I cussed at my wrist. What I mean is I took authority. I spoke to that cyst that was developed on it, and I said, cyst, I, I declare you are cursed in the authority of Jesus' name. I call you cursed in your very root, removed and cast into the sea. And, and uh, you know, I had to stand steadfast for that. It took several weeks, maybe a month or more. But as, as I continued to persist in my faith and speak to that, see, every time I'd look at it, it'd, it'd talk to me. It'd say, I'm not going. I'm not gone. I'm not going. I'd say, yes, you are. I call you gone. 
in Jesus' name. I see it done. I see I see that wrist whole and healthy. And I want to tell you, that, that's that wrist right there. It's whole and healthy. There's no cyst on it. Now, I'll tell you something else. I, I had another one that came up on this side. And I don't know that you can even see it now, but there, there was a cyst right here doing the same thing. And it had grown out. It was, you can't, maybe you can't see this. I don't know. Uh, but it was out as far as that just a few months ago. And I've been speaking to it and resisting it and declaring it's been cursed and uprooted. And I ain't struggling to make it happen. I'm declaring it because in the authority of Jesus' name, it is done. And, and do you know what? It's, it's, you almost can't see it today. It's just almost practically invisible. Well, you know, whether we can see it or not, the Word of God is true. And when we speak with authority, we can believe that what God's Word says is ours, is ours, and what He says is done when we speak in faith is done. And, and uh, maybe you know somebody that's got cancer. You know, that's the same way you deal with cancer. I, I've looked at people. I've had people. Uh, we, we had someone that had cancer in their abdomen. And, and I, <laughs> I'm praying for them. You know, when we think about praying for people, we're thinking about if, if we're so bold, we might touch their head gently and, and pray some soothing words over them. But I, I, I looked at them and I said, I'm going to speak to this cancer that's on your body in Jesus' name. I explained myself to them. And then I took my hand and I put it down. I actually, I think I had some ladies lay their hands on this woman's abdomen because we want to respect people. And, and uh, we don't want to you know, seem or act inappropriately. And so I, 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 as they laid hands upon this woman's abdomen, I laid my hands over them and I said, tumors in the name of Jesus, I call you cursed. I command you to be loosed from this body and withered up in your roots. Surgeon went in there and guess what he found? He, he said, we found all the tumors. He said, but do you know what? When we went in there, I've never seen anything like it. They were detached from the, the walls where they had been implanted and they were withered up and gray and dead. <laughs> that was just a day or so. What would happen if we just did what God says? See, whether you feel like it or not, you've got authority. And, and many times the things that we are experiencing in life are due to our flippant exercise of authority. You know, the devil sends symptoms on us and we start talking about how oh, I must be catching such and such. People start talking about the flu going around. I say, yeah, it's going around me. It's not going to settle on me in Jesus' name. Now, it's tried to a time or two, but I've never given in without a fight. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and I'm learning to fight more wisely in these last days through my faith. Praise God. Amen. Well, uh <laughs> it's important that we understand how practical faith can be listen I'm out of time again but we're going to get into this next week a little bit more amen I just want to encourage you what about the threats that are present in the world today what about injustice does the Bible have a solution for injustice it does and the, the solution is spiritual amen I really wanted to get into that today we're just so out of time uh, but we'll get with it next week. So come back and be with us again. We we appreciate so much those of you that join with us uh, as we broadcast and those that listen to this and, and, and watch the video later on online. We, we are so privileged to have the honor of ministering God's Word to you, and, and we're thankful for it. And listen, uh, many of you have decided to help support this ministry. We, we, uh, we thank you for that support. We need that support. Romans chapter 10 talks about they, they can't preach unless they're sent. And when you support this ministry by your prayers, by your presence, by sharing these videos, by sending in offerings, when you do that, you're helping further the gospel. And, and we just are so thankful for that. We appreciate you. If you'd like to continue to support us by sending an offering, uh, feel free to do so. You can do so by using PayPal at abundant love seven it's all lowercase a b u n d a n t l o v e no spaces seven the number seven at bellsouth.net is our email address and you can paypal us there or you can send us an offering by check if you'd prefer uh the address is our presently the office is out of our home address in jacksonville 
It's 2548 Blackshire Road, Jacksonville, Florida. 2548 Blackshire, B-L-A-C-K-S-H-I-R-E Road, Jacksonville, Florida, 32218. We're so thankful for those of you that can help us and, and that do so. And we're, we're thankful for those of you that pray and stand with us. And I just want to encourage you, you're precious to us. You're precious to God. And he's, he's put you in the world for such a time as this. Don't look at how small you are. Look at how big your God is. He's chosen you for these last days. And just as he's chosen you, he's equipped you for good works. There's something meaningful in your life and through your life God is working to do. So continue with us as we learn his word and walk with him. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We love you and we appreciate you.